Hello there, Possum Kingdom. It's Adam here, your favorite Starfinder GM. As we all get ready to close out 2019, I wanted to use this intro to reflect on the year. We launched Southern Tom Foolery Plays back in April, and these last eight months have been an incredible ride. Just in this short time, we have completed books one and two of our adventure. We hit 10,000 downloads in September. We launched three new shows on top of our main one. Heath has been doing a bang-up job with Tom Talks, and we had the great pleasure of launching STFU with Eleanor Farron, the writer of book two of our adventure, no less. And just this month, as a final notch for 2019, Emily sent Weldy and his companions on a new adventure of discovery and exploration with our Hacky Sack Heroes show. We went to Dragon Con and met so many new people and had such a blast reveling in our favorite hobbies with friends, new and old. We were sponsored by Roll20 and by Valhaven Studio. We launched our Patreon and hit our first goal within a week. But what we are all really treasuring from this year is our opportunity to get to know all of you in our amazing community. I think I can speak for all of us here at Southern Tom Foolery when I say our Discord and Twitter family has not only been a joy to meet and get to know, but you have brightened our days when we needed it the most. Thank you to all of you who have given us your time and energy to help build something greater than just the six of us here at STF. I cannot wait to see what 2020 brings for Southern Tom Foolery. PaizoCon? More content? Actual meetups? The stars are the limit, and we couldn't be happier to have each and every one of you along for the ride in the Epic Tracer. So here's to 2020 in the future of STF and our community. Cheers. So sit back and enjoy episode 46, the last episode of 2019. is happening y'all yo how we what doing up, what up? uh it's starfinder night so i'm fantastic even though uh, i'm right. sick head cold but i'm a power through is it, is it starfinder it. night or is it fucking starfinder night tonight i believe it's starfinder it's just night starfinder night yeah. starfinder night okay yeah. well that's good <laughs> we're here to find stars yes <laughs> what if that's well, all no, the you're... game was it's just you're, you're finding <laughs> new stars <laughs> so oh, we're just Pivoting to a stargazing it's an astronomy yes. podcast. It's a star finding yeah. podcast. We're gonna like search the night sky and point out beautiful constellations. Okay. Okay. Well, I love our pivots. Cool. Nice. Like Orin, Orin will be hosting the show. <laughs> and and, and Mike will point be, your eyes to Alpha Centauri. Mike <laughs> will be quitting the show. <laughs> yeah, talk about ASMR, dude. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, no, listen, it's actually been a while since we've sat down and played Aeon Throne. I know yes. it's only been a week for you listeners, but for us, it's been a minute. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I think it's Time for a good old-fashioned recap. Doodly, doodly, doodly. Oh, thank God. No, no, yes, please, it's not time you. for the doodly doodly. Oh, no, doodly. No, doodly doo. No, no, no. That's, that's, a, that's a different thing. That's excited. a different yeah. thing, right? <laughs> this is the oodly oodlies, mm. not the doodly doodly. Mm. Mm. Oodly oodly oodly. I hate the oodly oodly. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, after you guys escaped from the prison moon, you got Sedona. You made your way back to Outpost Zed. You arrived here at Hashchir Space Dock, which he opened to you with open arms. And also his beautiful rest pods that somehow absorb your waste while you're sleeping. I know that's a big point of contention for you, all of you listening. Get over it. It happens in the pods. Has, has that been a there thing? are butt tubes. I, I guess I missed yeah. out on that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have there's shit whole, tubes, a, okay? That's just yeah, a thing. It's a whole deal. That's it's a thing. Tubes all the way we down. We don't have to talk about it. It's polite not to. But we're going to. Um, our butts get plugged up with a tube. Stop. Nope. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so you guys get there. Sedona mentions to you something about being taken to a place called Arellos, which none of you have done anything to find out about, which is fine because there's been a bunch of other stuff that's been going on. Um, Wait, give us a break. Zeno, or I'm sorry, Mike and Fell have been working on some armor armor for Zeno in secret. Fell has been initiated into the APA and also had a date with local merchant Half Red. While on that date, the rest of the crew was sleeping in these waste removal pods and an explosion <laughs> happened in the space dock, uh, causing them to jump out of their pods, shit free and all, to investigate, <laughs> to investigate <laughs> what could possibly happen in the, sh in the repair bay. They get there, they get attacked by some animated tools. They defeat them. And then they find Hashishir unconscious on their ship. He doesn't know what happened. There's a small altercation between Hashishir and the party as the party feels that Hashishir is hiding something or that there's at least something off about him. You know, it's this, it's one of those gut feelings that you have no reason to feel other than your guts telling you something. But they resolved to, it kind of just ended a little badly with Hasachir kind of storming off and then being like, well, I don't know what the deal is, but he seems legit. I mean, he's your boy. He lets you stay here. His stuff was ruined in this as well. All the meanwhile, Mike has been involved in this series of fights, of boxing matches organized by the Glimshar Pirates. The first fight he succeeds in with flying colors. He lays out the Paralith as if he was a born boxer and maybe boxed in his former life. Almost <laughs> like that. Had. It's almost, it's almost like exactly that. like that. Second fight, he gets in there and almost immediately, Mike and the rest of you realize that either this person that he's fighting, this uplifted bear that he's fighting was misrepresented in the qualifying rounds or whatever because the hits are coming harder than expected. Damage is being dealt that you wouldn't expect to. And something is off. And they determine that he was, they were cheating and his Draylic companions were buffing him with magic in the corner in between rounds. And they spotted this, called out the cheating and the Draylicks, and you guys probably don't know this yet. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal this to you now. They had ghost sound, which is what caused the sound in the marketplace, the explosions, and caused the ruckus. What? Nothing actually exploded in the marketplace. They just used ghost sound to cause madness. Everybody fanned out, leaving you guys to square off with the two Draylicks and the uplifted bear. You took down the bear, you took down one Draylick, and you got one Draylick under your custody right now. Kept him alive because you wanted to interrogate him. Ten chicken wings up, ten chicken wings down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a Hot Ones reference, if anybody. I didn't know. I mean, yeah. his Hot well. Ones. Oh, love Hot Ones. Shout out, my boy Sean. It's, it's <laughs> good stuff. It's a good show. But before we get to that interrogation, it is time for some doodly doos. <gasps> Are we ready? Are we ready? We're doing this. <laughs> Mike storms into the locker room with his teeth bared and his veins rippling through his muscles. The fluorescent lights overhead seem to flicker as if they were startled by this vest's explosive entrance. Trailing droplets of blood from an unbandaged wound above his eye, Mike stomps over to his locker and rips the door from its hinges. The enraged Vesk flings the locker door over his shoulder, nearly hitting a burly, scarred man who enters the room behind him. Whoa, crikey, calm down, mate. What are you in here breaking shit for? Look, Gartensio, I won that fucking fight, right? I know it, you know it. The fucking Crag knows it, all right? But he's fucking judges. And then a sudden look of clarity comes over Mike's bloody face 
and he turns towards Gardenzio with a terrifying gaze that seems to cut right into his mentor, his adopted father. What did you say to the judges, Gardenzio? Mate, mate, easy there, big lizard. You still all worked up from the fight. Sit down for a minute, champ. At the word champ, Mike reacts with another explosion of emotion. The vest claws reach out with lightning speed and clamp around Gardenzio's neck, nearly popping this man's eyes right out of his skull. You don't get to call me that now, Gardenzio, do you? What did you say to them judges? Mike loosens his grip just enough to let the man speak. Mike, I, I, I did this for us, right? <coughs> the kindness, we, we need money, right? You, you know, <coughs> Mike, please, let me down. We can talk. Mike squeezes Gardenzio's neck again, and just as the man's face turns an alarming shade of purple, he flings the man into the floor, and Gardenzio slides across the tile into a set of lockers. At the crashing sound, two men pop into the locker room, but Gardenzio waves them off and says, It's alright, fellas. <clears throat> Me and Mike here are just having a bit of a fiery chat, right? Mike just looks at the two men, but says nothing. Gardenzio nods again, and ask for a bit of privacy, and the pair of mercs leave the room, closing the door behind them. Gardenzio pulls himself off the ground, rubbing his neck as he stands. Mike, I know you're upset, so I'm gonna let that slide, right? But don't you forget who you work for now, and who saved your scales from them as lanty fucks, right? You owe me, crop share, right? Now let's have a real conversation, yeah? I told the judges to call the fight in favor of the Crag, but you don't think that I would make sure my favorite son didn't get a piece of the pie, did you? The gardeners just made 50,000 credits, and 5,000 of that is yours. Now, is your pride a bit wounded? Sure, but there will be other fights, and probably other fixes. You're gonna be a good lizard and keep this up, right? For the gardeners. Your only family left. Mike looks back at Gardenzio and growls. I'm done, Gardenzio. I ain't got no family. I'm done with the fucking gardeners. I'm done fighting, and I'm done with you. Well, that's a pity. And Gardenzio shakes his head with a look of almost sincere regret before it turns into a scowl, and the scarred man roars. Boys, get him! Two giants of men burst through the locker room door, guns drawn on Mike. Mike looks at Gardenzio with betrayed anger, and then in a flash, he turns on the gunman. Before the gardeners know what hit them, Mike breaks the front man's arm and follows through with an uppercut on the second man. The hit dislocates the man's jaw, resulting in some sort of mutated yowl. Mike delivers two more punches to each man, leaving them unconscious on the floor. Mike then reaches over and grabs a vase off the refreshment table. Gardenzio always liked to have flowers in his spaces, and the locker room was no exception. The Vesk walks over to Gardenzio, who is still sitting on the floor, with a mixture of shock, anger, and terror on his face. As Mike walks over to Gardenzio, vase in hand, the man raises his hands and protests, Michael, you owe me. I fucking saved you. I don't owe you a fucking thing. And the vase with a purple orchid comes crashing down on Gardenzio's head. His body slumps over unconscious. Mike gives him one last look and then turns his back and walks out of Gardenzio gym and never looks back. <laughs> Dude, that was great. I love it. God. So now we're back in the situation where all of you are kind of surrounding this Draylick who you have bound up next to the boxing ring, you know, and Mike's kind of in his head just thinking about this as another. uh, Here he is, his second boxing match back, and it was rigged again. Mm mm mm. 
boys. Let me at him. Please. I beg of you. Please. Fucking let me at him. Yeah, I think you deserve this one, Mike. Well, can we tell about how close to dead this cat is? I mean, he's unconscious currently, you know, and you guys, like, wake him up just enough to talk to him whenever you're ready to do that. Yeah. He says, hold, hold on just a moment, Mike. Just Yeah, let us- I, get, I get it. You're the good cop. But I'm the fucking bad cop, right? (laughs) Absolutely, darling. Let's get this done, yes? And uh, she kind of, like, gestures to Oren to sort of, like, shake him awake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, Oren shakes him awake and, like, he'll draw his survival knife and, like, Mm -hmm. put it right up to his neck as as he's shaking him up. Wakey, wakey. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, what? What what do you want with me? Morning, sunshine. <laughs> Just kill me and be done with it. <laughs> you don't get to die. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Here's the deal, big guy. My friend Mike's gonna ask you some questions. If we don't want the answers to him, we are gonna kill you. And then... I'm going to bring you back. We're going to ask you some more questions. And if we don't like the answers to them, we'll kill you again. I can do it all day. Oh my gosh, roll an intimidate Jesus check. Jesus Christ. Can, <laughs> can we assist? Uh, can I, I mean, aid that, was, that? I didn't yeah. help intimidate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think Mike and Ziva could probably aid. Do do I have an inspiration? I don't, I don't even remember if I do. But if I, I do, I want to use it. I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you to keep up with, man. Um, does a twenty nine assist? Twenty nine does assist. Yes. Does okay. a, does another twenty two assist? Also assist. So that's a plus four now to your roll here. Okay, I have a plus seven, so I am getting a, you know, P- plus eleven. Dec- plus eleven <laughs> to the roll. I rolled a natty, or not a natty, but I rolled thirteen with my bonuses. Right. So plus four that brings it to a seventeen. Okay. Man. Uh, you know, you definitely intimidate the shit out of him with that. Nice. Uh, <laughs> nice. And he says, oh, well, what do, what do you want to know? I uh, just get this over with. Go ahead, Mike. Oh, get this over with. This ain't going to be no quick process, my man. But I want to know, what the fuck, for one, are you trying to kill us? Me in particular. I'm, I'm, I'm just following orders. Oh, well, that leads to another question, don't it? From who, you sack of shit? And he kicks him in the ribs. All right, roll another intimidation check. With uh, I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Oren's intimidation carry over as a, bu- a plus two to yours. Right. I rolled a 21. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I am... <laughs> I'm working for st- my boss is Scraylin. Oh, she's gonna kill me! Uh, just, just be done. With- just put a bullet through my head now, please. No. Tell me about Scraylin. Is that is that what you said, Scraylin? Scraylin. Scraylin. Uh, I mean, all I know is that she runs the Third Eye Salvage Company here on. Outpost that. Oh, you know more than that, don't you? But you can start with that. Tell me about the salvage company. Where's that at? It's just a junk shop. I, it's on the lower levels of Outpost Z. Mm hmm. Yeah. And she, I mean, you know, she gives you the location. Sweet. Thank you so much for helping us in this endeavor. Please. Please don't hurt me. Are uh, we gonna hurt you? Why? I'm, I'm giving you all the answers that you're asking. You gonna do that anyway? Tell me more uh, about Scraylin. I know where she's based out of, but she can't be just a simple junk shop owner. What's she tied into other than that? There's something well, higher up and you know it. 
Yeah, there's a bounty on your head, you idiots. You went to Aslanti prison and raised... <sighs> She's trying to collect. Mm hmm Is this a legitimate bounty or is it from an offshoot, maybe under the table segment of the Aslanti? Does it matter? They want you dead and... Whoever it is is pay, paying a, a pretty penny to have you dead. She just promised us a cut. That's all I know. I, just We were supposed to help this bear kill you in the fight. Yeah, well, that's what you done fucked up, ain't it? So he, uh, <clears throat> he turns to his more charismatic friends. Says, I think, uh, got the basic parts of the information is there anything else that we can get out of this knucklehead so while this has been kind of happening ziva would like to have uh been casting detect thought okay um so like as he is fails the will save um i mean so yeah it this this draylick she's telling the truth you know, she's, she's, I, the, her surface thoughts are like, oh God, I hope this vest doesn't eat my face, <laughs> you know, is like what she's saying. And so she's su- sufficiently intimidated and is, is offering up what she knows. You know, she mm-hmm. was, she was hired by Scraylin, who is the proprietor of the third eye salvage company, uh, to assist this bear in killing Mike in the ring to make it look like something that happened in the ring. Um, and she knows that that bounty is coming from the Aslanti, at least because of what you've done at the prison. Tell me, what is your name? My name is Greylick. <laughs> <laughs> Got you Greylick on the guard, huh? Kralik the Draylik. Kralik, yeah. yeah. Kralik. Kralik. Working for Skralik. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> well, we are not our creative people. <laughs> Obviously. <our> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw through your ruse in about 7.8 seconds. Tell me, uh, Graylin, um, this bounty that's on our head, do you know much about it? Is it... What are the circumstances? Do we have to be dead? Can we be alive? All I know is that she was asking for Mike's death. I don't know about the rest of you. This is all that I was hired to do. All right, so tell me if we go make a visit to this Skralen. Is there any kind of special information we should know is there a secret knock or is there some kind of uh, code word that would give us access to her without any issue she can usually be seen uh, just running the shop she's not wanting to hide herself uh, you could just go there but I guarantee at first sight she will attack you and try to kill you well who's to say she'll see us coming yes anything else boys <clears throat> is she the we're gonna raise her is she the kind of person that might set up elaborate traps you know what I'm saying Bo- yes. booby traps I would think so. Yes, she is very protective of her shop, and I imagine there are many deterrents for those that would want to break in. Can you tell me? And he leans, he comes back, pushes Ziva out of the way a little bit, leans in. I'm talking about nose to nose. It's like, can you tell me about her temperament? I want to know how she is as a boss, as a person. How she act. Uh, She's going to kill me for revealing this information. I'm going to fucking kill you. Well, I'm just answering your question. Please don't kill me. She is... 
not a pleasant person. I but she pays well. Is she petty? Is she easy to goad? Is she calculated? I want to know personality traits, because this is an enemy, and I want to know how my enemy works. She is cunning and ruthless. She has not told me much about herself, and I have only spoken to her a few times, just given the details of her mission for me. Gwelyn, what exactly is this? Scranlin, what is you are Draelic, what is she? Oh, she is also a Draelic. She gives work to us here at Alt Post Z. She looks after our kind. Hmm. I'm getting real sick of this guy's voice. How, oh, I'm sorry, her voice. How, how does... Look, I know this might seem a bit odd. How does she treat you as underlings? Well, she was treating us fine. And, but I expect that to end for me now. I have failed her. She does not like failure. Mike lightly slaps the Draelic on the cheek. <clears throat> Says, thank you. Thank you very much. And turns to Ziva. Says, please. Can I kill him? Her? Excuse me. Can I, <laughs> can I do it? Can I, can I, please, can I do it? Wait, wait, wait. I, I can tell you more, please. Oh, well, what the fuck were you holding me. out about? <laughs> well, I don't, you can't, you have to promise that kill me. And give me your word. <laughs> I'll give you my word. You, you all heard him, right? He, Promised. Yeah, we heard him. Yeah, I heard him. I, all I know is that she's also hired a reptoid to hunt you. A reptoid? We got us a shape changer on our hands, right? That is very good to know. Mm. Well, mm. it certainly ain't please, you. Please. Let me go. I, I will leave Outpost Zed. I will find another place. Please, just let me go. Alright, so Mike <clears throat> is going to punch this person in the face as hard as he can. He doesn't want to kill him. He just wants to knock him out and be done with it. I'm not trying to okay. kill him. I'm not trying to kill yeah, him. Yeah, so, I mean, you All can right. you can definitely do that. You can definitely just knock her out. Just Yep. She just... <clears throat> Yeah, kind of. And I turn and I say, "Hey, I lived up to my fucking word, didn't I? You do what you want." Ziva says, "You did, Michael. You kept your word." And she summons inevitable downfall and brings it down on the Draelic's neck. Oh my god! I don't even. I don't even turn around. I hear the sound. I don't give a shit. I lived up to my end of the bargain. My uh, fell covers half Red's face. Well, she's here? Yeah. yeah she's oh, been watching God, this I whole know. time. All right, we've got to kill her. <laughs> right, dude. <laughs> she's like, oh, my, my boo got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Uh, your boo's been mixed up with the wrong crowd for a minute, baby. baby. Oh, boo's been running with the crowd. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> you just bring down inevitable downfall, and this is about the one time that you can guarantee hit when they're when you can do a uh, that was that a was a low gross. key coup de gras. Gras. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so you very get it. appropriate given the name of the weapon yeah yeah and and you just bring it down and just <laughs> slice right across the Draelic's neck bleeding her out at the base of this boxing ring 
Well, I wish you know, that one, that's done take one evil point. It's been a minute since we actually played this game together. You know, like <laughs> the, the fans don't realize that because of our release schedule, but I completely forgot we're like in public next to the boxing ring. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> around there. The only, the only people that are in here at this point are the five of you, Half Red, and, the, and Bright Bright. Crackle, crackle. Flicker, crackle down. I look, I look to bright, bright. What, what, what's, what's the take? You know, like what's the? I mean, he's just like kind of. He's keeping, a pirate, right? He don't right. He's like keeping other people from coming in mm-hmm. and kind yeah, of yeah. like helping y'all just let you deal with this how you want. Business like, as usual. He, yeah, oh, he's, he's a he pirate sweating after it. all. Yeah, he's not sweating it at all, and he's like even picking up like all right. I'm gonna keep other people from coming in here. I want to. You know? I want to go to bright, bright. And uh, mm-hmm. still, still to this day, not realizing whether or not he can understand the words that I say. I walk <laughs> up, put a put a hand on whatever the equivalent of a shoulder is, <laughs> and I uh, say, "Look, we're in some tough shit, right? Appreciate your friendship." And I hand him like a a, a small cred stick with a little tip, you know. <laughs> he like scurries up back to the middle of the boxing ring or like the edge of the boxing ring where his microphone translator was and like grabs it and like scurries back over to you and says thank you Michael for the tip for doing the thing I guess that I was helping you doing I'm not really sure what the tip is for but I'll take the tip because I don't want to be rude to you because being rude to you would suggest that I don't like you and I like you Michael because you're a good person to have on the team and but because you're a strong fighter and we like strong fighters on the team also tell your friends that their augmentation appointment is still on the books for tomorrow because that is the time that they made the appointment and we don't not make our appointments because nice. that's what appointments are for. Yeah. That's why we yep. make appointments. You're right. Wow. You're right. You are too good at that. You're right. Going on and yeah. on. Yeah. Ziva's uh, like checking uh, and the also, body. <laughs> we, we will make sure that nobody uh, hears about what happened here because what happened here seems like something that nobody should hear about. So we'll make sure that nobody hears about it. Is this satisfactory to you, Mike? Is this a thing that would make you feel happy to be part of the team, Mike? So I turned to his translator. I'm like, you're, you're not one for subtlety. That's what the tip was for. I do not understand the word subtlety. Cool. Anyway, I do have a question for you. This was a free fight tournament, right? I don't plan yes. on reneging on our deal what's but could you tell me what's the third fight uh yes of course mike i think you have earned the right to know who your next fight is because this fight fell through that we were deceived by this bear we thought that this was a less powerful bear than it was but this bear proved to be more powerful than we anticipated and because he was more powerful we find ourselves in this situation and because we're in this situation I will tell you who your next fighter is even though I had hoped to not tell you because I wanted it to, to be a surprise because if it was a surprise I think you would have been really surprised. Your next fighter is going to be Kregma, otherwise known as the Craig. <laughs> oh my god. What? what? Hold, oh, hold on. Wow. And I, he, ter- he like says that to Crackle, brag, frick, fricker, 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 fricker. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, but he turns to his translator. He looks at him, then he looks at Bright Bright, then he looks at him. And I mean, he just busts out laughing for a minute. And he says, <laughs> All right, so I gotta fight the fucking Craig once again. Everything comes full circle, don't it? All right, but for real, this time, I expect you, and I mean you personally to oversee inspection of this fire to see that I'm not fucking cheated again, all right? Or I will bring unholy hell down upon Outpost Zed, I swear on my fucking mother's life. (laughs) Uh, Bright Bright just looks uh, looks at you as much as it can look at you and says, um... No, no, Mike, of course, this is why we have brought the Crag back to fight you. We felt that you did not get a fair deal as we did research on your last fight, and this was your last fight, which was the Crag, otherwise known as Kregma, which is a Vesk that you fought that we found was this fight was rigged by your former mentor, Gardenzio. Yes, we have done research on you. We know who you are, and we felt that 
you were not done a fair deal and we wanted to do a fair deal for you because we like you Mike because you're strong and we want you to be a part of the team and because you're a part of the team we're giving you another chance to fight your nemesis who was the one that cheated you out of the last fight that you fought before you started fighting again it's the whole reason we put these fights together so you could fight the person that stopped you from fighting to, and he's like just kind of like almost is he, spiraling is at he this point like, like, I know yeah. it always <laughs> seems like this but is he nervous a little bit at this time okay. yeah he did, like th this didn't go like bright bright wanted yeah. you know yeah. like at all with it ending yeah. in a murder torture scenario sure well yeah like he <laughs> thought that Kregma would be something that you would be happy about fighting in a surprise that he wanted to put on you by building you up fighting two opponents that to get you back in the swing of it you know and he's he's not upset wrong. that this one was yeah he's upset that this fight did was rigged you know he's embarrassed yeah even i know that yeah. i understand that he's not wrong i do think mike would relish in the uh, potential of getting revenge on this and he turns to the translator and he's like all right <clears throat> thank you for providing me with the opportunity to maybe get revenge on the the sins of my past against my past not of my past in particular however i just want you to be accountable and make sure that none of this malarkey goes on again, right? And I expect you to oversee that. That said, love you, and I'll see you at the fights. And and he it reaches out his hand to give him a fist bump to try to express that, like, we're cool. Like, at first, you know, this is a spider creature, right? So at first, it kind of, like, you see... The crystals on its back kind of pulse and he looks at your fist and like backs up a little bit at first is because he thinks you're like trying to punch him mm -hmm. and then he realizes that you're not following through and he like tentatively puts up one of his legs up against your fist he says is this the bumping of the fist of which we do to say good job friend yes uh, well, I, well, well, after I it's translated, your fist, yes. But I don't have a fist, but I'm going to pretend like this is my fist because this is a thing that you do. And because this is a thing you do, we don't want to offend you by not doing it. So I'm going to bump your fist with the end of my leg and hope that this is a thing that works for you. Yeah. Because we like you, Mike. Yeah, well, I think you owe me that. So, yeah, look, we're cool. <laughs> but make sure none of this bullshit goes on again. I'll fight another fight because I made an agreement and I don't break my fucking agreements, right? Oh, there's one more thing that we didn't tell you because we also oh, wanted this to be a surprise. Oh, he's on steroids legally? No, no, no. We think you'll like this, which is why we wanted it to make it surprise because we think surprise are fun for things that you like, not surprises for things that you don't like, like what just happened here. This was a surprise we know that you didn't like, but we had surprises for you that we thought you would like. And the surprise that we have for you that we think that you'll like is that if you win this fight, we're going to pay you 7,000 credits. God damn! Ooh, woo -woo. All right. Whoa. Hey, Holy yo. shit! All right. And can what I about his manager? Does his manager <laughs> get a cut? <laughs> well, that's up to yep. you to determine the percentages of the cut because the cut of the percentages is something that's usually determined by the athletes and their team and the team and their athletes. Okay. All right, we get it. We get it. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Look, hey, right, right. You're my guy, right? Just stay on top mm -hmm. of this. Don't let no more corruption come through, right? Augmentations tomorrow, tomorrow augmentations. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Bright Bright. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are really gonna, gonna do another fight when we got a bounty on our heads. Oren, Oren, I don't break my fucking agreements. Yeah, fair uh, enough. So the, the next fight's not for two days. So you have time to deal with this bounty, maybe. Well, you know. if but we can raise hell. you don't have your gun. Exactly. Yeah, I was about to say, if we're going to raise some hell, I need my iron. All right, we got two <laughs> days to get ready, and believe you me, we're going to raise some hell. <laughs> uh, okay, so you leave the bloodied carcass of the space broccoli. Should I we mean, dispose of it? I mean, should we? Uh, no, don't right, worry. Right. We will dispose of this body because we are pirates, and disposing of bodies Fair. is what pirates do. And blah, 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 yep. blah, blah, blah. I, I did know? say, though, I wanted to go through, because I'm looking to see if there was, like, any, like, notes or anything on the body saying, like, go kill this person, sign or me. Or weapons or loot or whatever. Yeah. I mean, they're normal stuff. They have their staff. 
you know, and they have their freebooter armor, but I think it's all less than what you're wielding at this point. Can we just convert you know? it to credits? We could sell it. Yeah. We could definitely yeah. yeah. sell it. Yep. I'll put it in your treasure treasure box. You're a good GM. Nice. All right. Okay. You're a good uh, man. But it's Thank gotten you. late, so I think it's probably time to call it. I, I think, right? So as you guys are kind of maybe at this time Oren you get a little notification on your comm unit okay and it's from the gunsmith mm-hmm. and time. He's, le- he's let you know that your hunting rifle is going to be ready for you tomorrow and that you can come pick it up about fucking time and so you guys head back to Hashichir's space dock get in your pods Get your waist removed and have a full night's rest. <laughs> I think Fell is actually <laughs> Fell's Fell's not gonna not gonna be about those pods. He's gonna go sleep on the ship. He's gonna sleep in his bunk because that okay. tracer's right there. Because that's not somewhere his water he can bowl. take Half Red, right? No, she's actually not gonna come with him. Yeah, oh. Half Red's kind of a little disturbed by everything that happened. Okay, here. she's not like mad or whatever, but she just looks at Half Red and kind of shows a picture of a fish and a home and then like a no sign like like no smoking yeah um <laughs> and it's like a picture of you know the man and woman hugging or whatever oh right? I'll break but, it but she sends that first and then she like and she sees Fell's like expression fall and she reaches out a watery tentacle and kind of puts it on his face and says you know, uh, she puts a kissy face, right? And then yeah. she puts a bed again, and then she just puts like the Z's. You know, like, like go, basically, I need to go to sleep. Like she needs, she needs her time yeah. right now. Needs you know, her beauty like, rest, she, man. You gotta respect that. Well, and she just will needs, witness you murder somebody who tried to murder you. you well, know? we inter- yeah. we, well, we did murder. <laughs> two pe- two people, and then we interrogated, and then murdered the third. She yeah, witnessed yeah. a disturbing situation. I yeah, suppose. listen, tough. this yeah. is look. If you don't want to see how the fucking sausage is made, stay out of the factory. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she, she 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 is not utterly repulsed, indicated by her her brush on your face, but she needs some time. What what know? color was she? Uh, like a pale yellow. Okay. Oh, that's not good. She's, she's terrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a big she caution herself. sign she pissed her right water. there. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Straight up she, sister she bubble. Inked, she inked her bubble. Right. She inked her you bubble. You made me ink. So that's, that's the that end what she of, said. That's the end of day four of your time here on Outpost Ed. Do y'all realize it's been four days? No. It feels, like, feels yeah. like four years. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the end of day four. You guys get your full rest. Um, get your stamina back. And then, did you get knocked down into your HP, Heath? <laughs> uh, you got damn right I did. All right, so you just heal HP. What is it? I can't remember. I think it's your level is how much HP you get. So I'm going to have to spend these two days, like, getting all my shit back, pretty much. <clears throat> Well, you've got a. Um, don't you have a lay on hands, Oren, that you can drop on them before they go to sleep? Oh, most of. Do you happen yeah. to have additional lay on hands? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have enough spell slots, man. Well, here's the situation. Up. All right, I'm at 39 of 41 hit points, completely depleted of stamina. Oh well, you'll you'll get that back just by resting. The stamina. Wait. You'll get all the stamina back, and then you'll definitely get. The H, you know, that two points of HP from. Yeah, but it'd be more than that. Yeah, it'd be more than two. So the only reason I'm as high as I am on hit points is because Sedona did her heal. Yeah, because she healed you in the fight, right? Yeah. And so then Oren can heal Ziva before you guys go to sleep with the lay yeah. on hands and get you guys refreshed to full for the next day. And so it's the morning of day five. Okay, and Sedona is waiting for you guys at breakfast. She says, Epic Tracer crew, I know that you've taken advantage of some much needed 
time off, but the rune drive awaits us, and I fear that we are no closer to finding out where that is. The only lead that I have is Arellus, and I must implore you to bring your attention back to what our task at hand is, and it's to retrieve the rune drive to make sure that the Aslanti do not gain access to this technology. Please, in your travels today, ask about Dorellos. Try to find out where this is. It's the only lead we have. I, I want to say, Mike's not going to say a word, but I think Sedona would notice that he has a wild, like, almost incredulous look in his eyes. Like, bitch, seriously? Because he's focused on his own shit right now, you know? But he doesn't say right. a word. He just, like, looks at her like, are you fucking kidding me right now? She's not, for what it's worth. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get that. I get that. I'm just, you know, yep. saying what I'm saying. Sedona, we will absolutely um, ask around, get as much information as possible. I think with our recent exploits, we may be able to bend a few arms, as it were, a little bit more easily, get some information. So we will use all of the leverage that we can to obtain information on this Aurelus, is this correct? Aurelus? Aurelus, yes. Aurelus. A-U-R-E-L-O-S. Aurelus. Ah, she says, thank you. I, I understand that you needed time to recover from the prison, as did I. I still do not feel at full strength. I just... And she looks at you, Ziva. She says, We talked about this. We cannot stay here. We have to go. We will. Absolutely. We, um... We just need... We just need a couple more days. I have an augmentation that I need to take care of, and there is, well, there is the matter of, well, the fight. But I truly believe that this will help us along the way. Otherwise, we would not dawdle. Right. So there is some business that you have to take care of, right? There is getting Oren's gun. So Oren, tell me. Or Zach, rather, mm-hmm. tell me, tell me how Orn's gun has been upgraded. Uh, okay, so I used a weapon that's in one of the supplemental books called a Hutch Kit rifle. I can't remember which one. Maybe the Packed Worlds. Okay, I think it's in the Packed Worlds, and uh, it's just a little. It's gonna uh, go up one time on the uh, the damage die, and it's a. Uh, it's gonna have a critical effect. It's going to have a little uh, wounding critical effect. Oh, nice. Okay, so what we did here is that um, Oren's gun is really important to him as a character, but I didn't want to keep Oren gimped as we leveled up, you know? So he's it still has his gun, but we've upgraded it to an appropriate level weapon using stats from another weapon that is kinetic-focused, you know what I mean? It's a, analog. It's, uh, it's yeah. analog and everything. So right. it, it all fits. But just so you know, this is still his gun. And when you get it back, your eyes immediately float right down to that inscription, which says Evelyn. Yeah. And uh, a, a smile comes to his face. And he just kind of like says, you know, t- to the gun, it's good to have you back, girl. Okay, so you get your gun back. You got your gun back, buddy. You got an an improved Uh, version of it. Finally, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Josh and Emily, both Ziva and Fel, go for their augmentation appointment. And when you get there, they've closed off the gambling hall for the day. And they have a real small spider out front, kind of like bouncing the door. But as soon as, uh, as soon as he sees the two of you approach, his pink crystals just bright up like, pew, 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 and like, you know, you have no idea what he's saying, but you hear a bunch of chittering, 
and the doors open and when you go in instead of gambling tables there you see like two work tables you know like thrown together with like milk crates and wood and then like a sheet thrown over the top of both and it's not necessarily a clean sheet hella sanitary yeah and, it's, and uh bright brights there with another glimshar pirate it's another spider looking thing but this one has green crystals on its back and in its hand it has like a little buzz saw like a little bone saw it has like a scalpel in one of its legs and it has like some <laughs> some like tongs in one hand and there's like in between both of these kind of thrown together beds is a oil barrel with a bunch of other tools sitting on the top of it so and uh, it, it's just the great the, and is <laughs> he's got like a little like surgeon's mask over the lead most crystal on its back <laughs> <laughs> so as we walk in uh and fell and ziva see all of this fell looks at ziva and says first time oh darling a woman never tells and she winks <laughs> and kind of walks towards the uh the table. She's like, wow. bitch, I've had work done. Wow. Okay. <laughs> My bad for trying to try to comfort Ziva. <laughs> Walking in, seeing all this crazy shit. She said, I'm in my 40s and I look like I'm in my mid 20s. <laughs> yeah, like, My bad. Bitch is rocking it. Uh, yeah, Fel, uh, Fel's yeah. a little bit taken aback by that. Fel will yeah. remember that. Yeah, it was maybe a little unexpected for sure. Um, either way, you guys both kind of climb up to your tables and I. I'll tell you, I don't know what state of dress that you were in when you got on the table, but the doctor refuses to work until you guys have, like, stripped down. No, Fell, knowing this process, you know, because his people, uh, like, he, he, like, as he gets to the table, disrobes, lays down, and just closes his eyes with a big smile on his face. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh. Uh <laughs> Uh, Ziva would kind of like see Fell sort of disrobing like oh this makes sense and will follow suit and as she kind of goes to lay down on the, sa- uh, the table next to the drum of tools uh, she'll <laughs> kind of like look over to Fell's table and say hmm not bad and <laughs> <laughs> uh, and at that the spider doctor his two back legs come up over that you didn't see, and there's a syringe in each God. each leg, and bloop, bloop, in each of you, and kind that of isn't like horrifying, yeah, <laughs> and and basically like paralyzes you guys and dulls your senses, so you don't feel any of the pain as they begin the operations on you. What are each of you getting for augmentations? So Ziva is uh, pretty familiar with being able to use her tongue to get out of certain sticky situations, but uh, there should be more opportunities, she thinks. So she's getting a dragon gland implanted. It's uh, it's you like a... motherfucker! I I am <laughs> so mad at you right now. I wanted to do this so bad, and I didn't have the goddamn money. You thunder stealing hussy! Now you know how it feels, Heath, when you've got a character oh who's in an augmented cast. Oh, no, you mean, you, mean, you, mean, oh, you want to go into this, Josh? You want to do this? No, no, yeah, you, mean, no, you mean no, when no, I got let's gifted something that you integrity. wanted and didn't get gifted? Fuck off! Uh, so, anyways, uh, um, I'm, I'm getting, getting a that fabulous. Dragon gland. <laughs> Uh, no, it's going to be uh, an implant that goes into the back of the throat, and uh, when you trigger the gland, you, as a standard action, get to expel a breath weapon in a 15-foot cone. Uh, you it's get to choose um, acid, cold, electricity, or fire. Damn. And so, okay. Yeah. All right, so they're, they're, they're in there, and, like, you're awake during this, let me tell you. 
Like you're just paralyzed and you don't feel pain, mm. but you're awake and conscious. You know what I mean? And so like you see them and they're just cutting your throat wide open. And like they like spider legs the, hanging yeah, over you. Legs, Ugh, dude. You know, <laughs> no. forceps spread your throat open as they staunch the bleeding, kind of tie off the veins from bleeding out. And they get in there and they pull this dragon gland and there's there there is like three glands in this little baggie that they pull off the drum. It's a ziplock, you know. And then and it just reaches in and pulls out one of the glands and just shoves it in the hole in your throat. And then he kind of solders it in there with a little bit of laser uh, laser work, and then sews your throat back up. Um, she okay? She, what? Sorry, she has an additional um, augmentation that she's getting. Can you afford this? Well, you're getting yeah, killed? yeah. We talked about this. Yeah, the other one is just a hideaway limb. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. Meanwhile, uh, bright, bright is down on your leg, cutting into your calf. Just cuts a big slash in your calf, and just slides like a metal pocket into your leg, just like that. And then puts a couple hinges on your skin flap, closes it back up. And now you have a hideaway limb where you can hide a knife in there, can you right on right on your leg. Yes. You got. You right, can hide Josh. A pistol what is Phil? Right? Huh? Can't you hide a pistol in a hideaway limb? You can, but I think she specifically wanted okay. to put a knife. Yeah, in there. That's, that's it. A knife. All right. What about you, Phil? All right. So Phil got speed suspension, uh, which, as I'm sure you all know, after what I just said to Heath, is the same. Uh, Augmentation that Heath or that Mike got earlier um, increases land speed by 10 feet by replacing a few parts in your legs. Okay, so you in your long lanky legs, the gr- the green backed doctor comes over to you, and <laughs> this is horrifying to you. He literally cuts off your legs, and then like. He takes them over to another table and like splits them open and like replaces the bones with some metal work, right? And some gears and pistons and stuff like that. He just finds it easier to work on legs when they're not attached to a person. It okay. I mean, makes sense. It makes you sense. Know? Yeah. I'm down with it. And then, and, then, and then he takes your legs. Oh, and, yeah. And, then, and he brings them back over to you. So, Frito, for a good hour, Fellas just sitting there with no legs. And Ziva, you you can like kind of see in your periphery as it just cuts off his legs and takes him takes him off the table and goes and to another table. Fellas uh, still just grinning the entire time. Like, yeah, and cannot believe this is happening. Fine. Replaces good, good the bone job. structure, as I said, with pistons and gears and stuff like that. And then sews them back on, fuses them back on with some biotech and some kind of hybrid magic. And boom, you have the augmented legs. Yeah, yeah. Make up that speed bonus for the heavy armor or the speed penalty. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Mike, what are you doing during this time? <clears throat> He's so mad. He's I'm so, so mad. goddamn mad. <laughs> you I didn't know you wanted that. stealing hooker. Goddamn. <laughs> like, I wanted this so bad and just was shy of the credits the cash did you did you say that out loud he told me but he did not tell the rest of the group he told me about it yeah he told me about it (laughs) anyways what are you doing i was gonna bet on my own fight to be able to purchase that yeah well i did say that there was more available yeah you you said lots of vague bullshit that's awesome I hate Don't you, take this and out I hate me. her, and I hate Josh, <laughs> and I hate everybody. It's fine. This is just Heath. Mike doesn't hate any of you. Okay? Give me a second. I'm going to do a breathing exercise. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker right here, y'all. <laughs> All right, I figured out how to breathe. <laughs> Proud of you. Oh, thank God. So what is the question you're asking me? What are you doing during the day while they're stealing your augmentation? I'm murdering Ziva. I've turned on her. I never while made. While she's a, on I, the table. I never made a promise that I wouldn't murder her. You know. Plotting oh, the demise. Um, man, I'm real shook. I'm fucking shook like a motherfucker. You, you, st- 
stole my future. Oh, uh, it's Steve. You can it's still Steve get one, Steve man. Just one? beat this. Just no, beat I this won't asshole. No, get one now because it's not original. Oh my god. Uh, so okay. Look, I'm getting a call weapon fusion. I'm just letting y'all know that's gonna happen like soon. You son of a bitch. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was what I was gonna put on my the hammer fist. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the easiest fusion to uh, make your weapon count as magic. A little bit of meta gaming there. That's too bad you can't do a call fusion for your armor. <laughs> oh damn! It's it like I hadn't said Burn. a word in forty minutes and just burns the <laughs> shit out of somebody. <laughs> Been holding out on us. All right. Yeah. Uh, are we still playing the game? I just we I are. Forgot. We are. Yeah. I just uh, I'm, I'm want to know what Mike is doing during this day. And once he gets himself <laughs> you together, know, you know what Mike's doing? He's fucking working on armor for the person that betrayed him. That's what he's doing. Hey, it looks like both Josh and <laughs> oh, and we're Larry working on the whole party. Their future. <laughs> we're working on the whole party shitting on me. Uh, no, it's fine. I don't care anymore but no for real like he is still working on the i mean i assume fell's involved in this fell has been involved from the get-go uh that we're working on this armor there's armor for mike that he's working on and there's armor for uh uh xeno 5 that we're working on although he's been really conflicted (laughs) about working on the armor for xeno 5 um but he still deep down loves him and also doesn't want him to die you know right like that's the thing it's like even if he's mad at him like he's scared of him dying and feeling responsible for that all right so you're you're putting the finishing touches up on this and this is really your personal touches i mean fell's been helping you but the final touches that that's got to come from mike yeah i mean mike's in there putting his his like the stuff that he learned from his dad, the stuff that's inherent in his Vesk heritage or, or from his dad and all that kind of stuff. He's, he's dealing with a lot of emotions. A lot of stuff was brought up with the fight. and, and he's do, here, you know. I, I do want to say, I mean, Mike doing this is like in a fucking... I mean, anger is like all he's yeah. been feeling for days now. And he is like pumping that anger into getting this work done and he's like i know i'm gonna have to deal with this xeno thing but i'm not worrying about it right now i'm using that as fuel all of his anger is fucking fuel for what is practical to be done you know right all right um so back to ziva and fell your surgeries are done and the paralysis and the painkillers wear off what do y'all do (laughs) <laughs> yeah that i make that song no. too <laughs> <laughs> okay no not really no uh i imagine we pretty much feel good to go because these spider guys are not gonna do a sloppy job at all yeah <sighs> fell's gonna kind of you know sit up on the table and look down at his legs does he see anything visibly different to the exterior uh i mean there's definitely a big <laughs> you know wound where it's your leg is sewed back to the top of your thigh but sure but other than that no they look they look like fell's legs and you still have all the functional functionality of your skin changing ability what i was checking yeah uh like so like just despite appearances these glimshar pirates do a bang up job of the augmentations like other than the immediate, you know, wounds or, or whatever from the surgery, mm-hmm. the rest of your body parts look normal and are functioning normal or better oh, yeah, because so of the augmentations. You know? Fell wiggles his toes and they wiggle. They wiggle at like 300 beats per minute. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's it's like... Bad- <laughs> That's that's some badass wiggling action. Yeah. Uh, no, Fell stands up and just kind of you know or gently stands up and uh, I'm sure there's still a little bit of a kind of a tinge of pain even with the the magic and everything the the biotech used to you know reattach his limbs. He, you know, had severed limbs reattached and kind of tentatively walks and realizes that his stride is so much lighter and so much easier and he can move that much faster now. Yeah. About 33% faster. <laughs> right. What about you, Ziva? 
Ziva will sit up from the table and kind of like clear her throat, like, <clears throat> well, that was interesting. Thank you. Um, and it was Bright Bright that did the surgery. Is that correct? Uh, he was like the aide. Okay, he was the nurse. Okay, um, yeah. she she'll look at the prop, the surgeon and say, "Thank you. You are very skilled." Um, and then she'll kind of look back over at Bright Bright and say, "I wanted to ask you before we um, get out of your hair. Have you ever?" And she'll kind of drop her voice a little bit. Um, Arelos, are you familiar with it? Have you ever heard of this? Bright Bright looks to you and says, No, I have not heard of this place that you talk about, Arelos, other than it's a place that I think Aslenti have in their space. I do not know how to speak about this because I do not know enough information about it. I've only heard of it in our pirate travels and because we were traveling as pirates we've heard chatter of a lab called Arelos but we do not know the location of this Arelos and what kind of things they're doing in a lab which a lab is a thing where you study things Uh, there it is if you didn't know I I was aware and uh, thank you though for keeping me um, in in the know uh if you had a guess, is there any ma- anyone maybe on the station that you I think might have a little bit more information? No, he, he has nothing for okay. you as far as that's concerned. Um, she smiles very vaguely at him and she says, Again, thank you so much. I will put this, and she puts her hand to her throat, and she says, um, To very good use. And again, thank you for your help yesterday. It was much appreciated. And she kind of nods to him and again to the surgeon and sort of slides off the table. She says, Fel, are you all right? We, um, you good to head out? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm better than good. Hmm. All, all ready to see your new friend, hmm? With your extra traction. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know what, Ziva? We'll see. Um, so you guys make your way back to the space dock. And everybody kind of meets back up after a day of... You know, and f- to, you know, um, to your credit, Oren, while you're out getting your gun... Nobody knows anything about Arellos. Okay. You know, you're kind of out yeah, in the marketplace say, yeah. asking asking around and nobody knows anything. You know, nobody's no it, it just it's kind of a a dead end as far as that's concerned. So you guys come back to the space dock and meet up for dinner and still no Hassachir for what it's worth. He's not around. Is he mad at uh, us? But you get food and you I think he might be mad at us. <laughs> you think? You think? We kind of yeah. intimidated him and also, fucked up hey, his Donald robot Trump, guy. Did you say yeah. Bigly earlier? Yeah. I think you said Bigly. I, I may or may not have. Fuck you. Moving on. Cut that uh, out. Anyway, I don't want that um, in there. Baby. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so you guys... Uh, you guys kind of reconvene and you share your days with you, kind of show off your new augmentations. Mike no, is no, he's furious not. at you guys. I'm furious. I'm ca- furious. Okay, so he's cool Me, with the he's. augmentations. <laughs> right. My, but, however, Mike is angry okay. about other um, things, and Mike is not really trying to be personable right now. He's just furiously working on this armor because armor working has always been his like way to find Zen, you know? Like I don't, I don't want to see you, motherfuckers, sure, right now because sure. I'm dealing with a lot of shit. Right. So it's kind of an uneventful day, which has so far been a rarity here on Outpost Z. And you guys go into your pods, with the exception of Fell. Right, you're going to the ship to sleep. Yep. Okay. 
So, she, you know, Fel's going to the ship just to be with his baby kind of deal, like... Yeah, and he's, he's kind of giving it a walk through a checkout, because he hasn't spent much time on it lately. Yeah, just making sure everything's good. Go ahead and roll an engineering check for me. Okie doke. Oh! That's a nat 20. Oh, and there you go. Oh, baby. Yeah. Nice. Wow. So that, that wow. makes wow. 34 on the check. <laughs> all right, so you're going around, and you're inspecting all the engines... Right, and all of the systems, making sure everything's good, nothing's been messed up. Right, you don't find any viruses similar to the one that you found with the mechanized tools. You don't find any damage done to any of the systems. However, you do find that the power has been disconnected from both your regular thrusters and your drift engine. Uh, I'm a reconnect. Actually, I want to double check to make sure that they haven't been uh, sabotaged in any way. No, nope, so. they're they're fine. It, and it looks like the lines are still run behind the engines, you know. And because you did such a thorough check, you like looked behind, and they were unplugged, but not obviously so. Like you had to get kind of behind it and in the nooks and crannies to see yeah. it, you know. Just from a general perspective, it the, looks like all the socketed, wires but were still. Just- yeah. You're just barely hanging out of the socket, yeah. And you're like, interesting. You kind of plug it back in and make sure that it's secure. But definitely, both both the, both means of transportation for your ship had been just slightly unplugged. All right, and they're now both back online, yeah? Correct, yes. Sweet. So the rest of you are in your pods. And... You guys are all resting peacefully. All of your waste God, is being just removed. Always with that. <laughs> um, it's important. The scar tissue on your neck, Ziva, it starts healing, huh? right? So it's like this this pod's kind of rejuvenating and like speeding up that healing process. Oh, thank God. Um, and we kind of pan out, looking at all the pods. Right? And all of you resting peacefully with the exception of Fel. And then Ziva's pod. All of a sudden we see like a little stream of air coming out of the pod. Not where it's supposed to be. The oxygen line that connects to your pod. A fuck? little, a little leak, you might say. And from our viewpoint, we can see the oxygen levels on the readout of the pod depleting quickly, <laughs> as the oxygen is being siphoned out of the pod. What the Suddenly, fuck? there is an audible pop, and the accompanying pressure change that assaults your ears, Ziva, awakens you. And you find yourself in this pod, trapped in it, with no, no. breathable air. No. And we'll fucking God, see you. Oh, 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 what the fuck? Stop trying to kill me, Adam. This we'll is see you, Ziva. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fucking see you, Ziva. That's what you get. That's what you get for stealing my fucking God. dragon breast. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> I'm going to dragon breath my ass out of here. You just watch. I'm going to explode this bitch up. With the last remaining oxygen in there. Shut up. <laughs> Damn it, John. <laughs> Coming to me with reason and stuff. Come on. This episode has been sponsored by Roll20. This is how we roll.